So, let us begin a new module. So, in the previous two modules we have seen the introduction, the postulates of statistical thermodynamics and in the next module what we have seen? We have seen how to write the canonical partition function in terms of probability distribution and we have also taken the case of monoatomic gases in general. Now we move on and we move to the more complex phenomena that is the diatomic and polyatomic gases. So, in the first lecture of this module we will start with the diatomic gases. So, we will start with the diatomic gases and in this content what we will cover is we will cover the translational partition function, the nuclear partition function and the rotational partition function. Well, the translational and nuclear partition function are mostly similar as we have discussed for monoatomic the expressions remains the same. Only there will be some additional modes of energy in our diatomic cases that is the rotational and vibrational. So, because there is a bond, so there are bonds atoms will rotate and because of the rotation there will be energy level. So, in this particular lecture we will take care of the rotational part, subsequent lectures we will take care of the vibrational part. So, now what you do is in this case we add the supplementary atoms. So, we are adding two atoms together with a bond. So, these are supplementary atoms. The molecular structure results in the acquisition of internal energy modes pertaining to rotational and vibrational movement. So, you know the if you have read infrared spectroscopy, you know you can either stretch a bond or you can bend a bond. So, if you stretch a bond or you bend a bond, you require energy. So, for that you require a certain frequency. So, if this frequency matches with the absorption of light, it will show a spectra. So, that is how infrared spectroscopy works that is on the basis of vibrational spectroscopy. So, obviously, if this is vibrational spectroscopy, then there will be some energy levels associated with it. Similarly, likewise, you have rotational energy states. It means the atoms rotate around its axis. So, if it rotates around its axis, again, it will have some energy levels or energy states. So, we will try to find out or quantify how to obtain this microwave energy states. So, the obviously, there will be some enthalpy change. If you add two atoms, you will add some energy because to remove these two atoms, you have to supply energy. So, there is an enthalpy change associated with the formation of molecule from its constitute atoms. Let us take some examples. So, some of the examples of diatomic gases are H2, N2, O2 or carbon monoxide. So, if you see the cases, what it will be? It will having one vibration energy mode. Let us say we consider H2, N2 or O2. So, or in fact CO. So, it will have a bond connecting the two atoms. So, the bond can equilibrate along its axis. So, if, if this is a bond, so it can either uh, be stretched along the two different directions. So, this we call as stretching or it can bend also or it can also unequally stretch that is asymmetric stretching. So, that is why the bond stretching motion contributes to the vibrational energy mode. We will take this up later, but then it also has two rotational energy modes. So, rotation energy modes means rotations perpendicular to the line of molecular symmetry. So, this the rotations whatever this rotations is there, you have the rotations perpendicular to the line of molecular symmetry. Since you have two atoms, you have two rotational energy modes. So, we are adding this vibrational energy mode and a rotational energy mode. Then as usual, we will have three translational energy modes respective to the center of mass motion. So, if you have the center of mass of the two body system, so it can move along its x, y and z direction. Those are translational energy modes. Then again the energy state due to its electronic state. So, based on this, you will also have different energy states. So, the electrons may occupy different energy levels along with its degeneracy. It is exactly the similar way an analogy can be drawn with the monoatomic gases. So, this also we know how to compute. Now, what we will do in here is we focus on these two vibrational and rotation energy modes and in this particular lecture, we will focus on the rotational energy mode. So, the determination of the partition function for a polyatomic gas necessitates the identification and enumeration of all the energy states. So, obviously, when you talk about polyatomic, then there will be many rotational states, many you know vibrational energy states. So, it is essential to obtain all the states in order to move ahead. So, now we know that electronic and nuclear can be separated because if you recollect in the previous lecture, we said that due to the Born-Oppenheimer approximation, the wave function of 
electron and protons can be separated or electrons and the nucleus can be separated. So, those energy modes are always distinct from each other. Now, there are two modes, remaining modes, translational, rotational and vibrational. Now, translational energy mode can also be made independent because if you consider that particle in a box system, you see it will only depend upon the mass of the particle. Okay? It depends on the mass of the particle. It does not depend upon the internal structure. So, it can freely able to move along the x, y and z direction. So, I can decouple the translational energy mode also. Now, remaining is vibrational and rotational. Okay, so, summarize, you can see that infer that the translational energy modes can be regarded as separate. It says the translational energy mode is a separate energy state and it is unaffected by the rotational and vibrational movements. Okay, it does not depend upon the internal structure of the atoms. Now, the coupling of the rotational and vibrational degrees of freedom is a possibility. Why I tell you? Because if you see these two atoms, okay. So, let us suppose this is atom A with mass m1, atom B with mass m2. Let us say m1, m2 is not equal. Even if it is equal, the issue is suppose it stretches and let us suppose this is the interatomic distance R from its actually this will be taken from its center to center R. So, now it stretches this R also varies, but it is said that the coupling between rotational energy is thus possible you should take the coupling of position because when you talk about rotation energy state, the we talk about the terms called angular velocity and moment of inertia and this angular velocity moment of inertia depends upon the interatomic distance. But if the distance itself is changing, how can you compute the contractional energy state? So, what they do is they use the average moment of inertia or they assume the vibrational motion to be very less in case of diatomic molecules. You use the average moment of inertia to address the coupling caused by the rapid and small magnitude vibrational motion thereby leading to decoupling. So, there are two atoms, if you assume these two atoms to be not vibrating by a large extent. So, it means you can consider this interatomic distance to be almost constant. If you are doing that approximation so that you can play with the average moment of inertia, then you can write out all the expressions related to angular velocity and linear momentum. That is why these are separated. So, what we do is the rotational energy state, how do we compute? Because we have seen for translational, you can use the particle in a box. For electronic, we saw that these are equally spaced and then we apply the integral across the different states. But for rotational, you need some expression or you need an analogy. So, the analogy is a rigid rotator model with a fixed interatomic distance separation which is equal to the average or equilibrium separation distance. So, means there are two atoms like a rigid rotator which are fixed, the distance between the two atoms are fixed. Okay. And then for the vibrational, for rotational we assume it to behave like a rigid rotator while the vibrational energy modes is assumed to follow those of a harmonic oscillator. So, these two basic approximation we will be following and executing for obtaining the energy states of the rotational and vibrational motion respectively. So, now let us write down the expression for the translational and nuclear partition function which we already know. So, you have the Q overall Q will be equal to the Q translational Q rotational Q vibrational then Q electronic and Q nuclear. Okay? So, now you are having all the energy modes, translational, rotational, vibrational, electronic and nuclear. So, as before we know that we will take Q nuclear equal to omega nuclear of the ground state which is equal to unity. We will take this assumption. We have assumed that the ground state degeneracy in the case of nuclear partition function is unity. This assumption we will be taking and so the Q translational will be the same expression which we derived earlier. It will be 2 pi. Now, instead of small m, it will be the sum of two atoms m1 plus m2. Kt by h square.
And this, you know, we can relate by the de Broglie's wavelength. Okay. So, M1 plus M2 here is the only change is equal to the total mass of the diatomic molecule. So, everything remains the same. And then now our work in this particular lecture is to find the expression for Q rotational. So, now as I told you the energy levels from a rigid rotator can be derived from quantum mechanics. So, I will give you the description, the derivation of this, but this moment you can see the energy levels I can write down as E rotational J is equal to J into J plus 1 H square 8 pi square I. Okay. So, I is the moment of inertia and for linear molecule the value is half m1 d1 square plus half m2 d2 square. Okay. So, d1 and d2 are the, the diameters of the respective atoms. Now, the rotational degeneracy is a matter which we have to see because we have not talked about the you know this particular expression of energy states we are having, but now what is the corresponding rotational degeneracy means uh, if we are talking about energy states we have to put energy degeneracy or degeneracy value like we did for electronic. So, now the degeneracy the rotational degeneracy is given by this expression. So, the which will have the allowed values of omega. So, the allowed values of omega j is equal to 2 j plus 1. Okay. So, this is give the rotational degeneracy. It is 2 times of j plus 1. So, it is the jth energy level jth energy level that arises from the quantization quantization so is to quantifying if we are quantifying the energy level in orientation of angular momentum in angular momentum okay so so we have obtained the energy levels and we have also obtained the degeneracy. So, you multiply omega g with energy levels. So, now, but the issue is it cannot take all value of j. For example, there are two types of molecules with if there is a distinguishable nuclei, those are diatomic molecules which have distinguishable nuclei. For example, you know if you can have CO, HCl, here there are two atoms and they are distinguishable. If they are distinguishable, so, we call that as heteronuclear molecule we talk and term them as heteronuclear molecule all values of J are applied. So, all values of J are allowed. Okay. But for homonuclear atoms, for example, homonuclear are let us say H2, N2, O2, these are all homonuclear molecules because both the atoms are similar. Only odd or even. So, if it is homonuclear, only odd or even J values are allowed. Okay. So, you should keep in mind even if the allowed values of state is omega j 2 j plus 1, you can take all types of j values for heteronuclear molecule, but only odd or even for homonuclear molecules. Now, whether to take odd or even that will be depend upon the nuclear spin states 
nuclear spin eigenstates. So, I am not discussing what is that because a separate topic of discussion. So, just you have to keep in mind that if it is a heteronuclear, you have to take all the values of j, if it is homonuclear, only odd or even values are allowed. But this will ultimately does not will not mind, we will tell you the expression will be irrespective of odd or even. We will see that final expression of the rotational partition function. So, prior to that, let us see what is the rigid rotator molecule. So, the rigid rotator model which we have just now discussed and we have arrived upon a value of energy. Let us try to derive that from the our basic definition. So, for that let us first understand the microwave spectroscopy in general and the rotational spectroscopy. So, the energy levels it is said that the energy levels from a rigid rotator are derived from quantum mechanics. So, how it is derived I will then proceed after this slide. So, a gas molecule is irradiated with microwave radiation. Okay, so, this, there is a gas molecule, it is only possible if the molecule is gas, okay. then only you can apply microwave spectroscopy. So, you apply microwave radiation onto the gas molecule. What happens? The photons, the molecules when it is radiated with the microwave radiation, the photons coming from this microwave radiation can be absorbed through the interaction of the photons electronic field with the electrons in the molecules. So, there are two things, one is the electronic field of the photon and then there is the electronic field or electric field of the atoms. If they are absorbed, then they will be absorbing at the microwave region. So, that is the microwave region, the energy absorption causes transition between the rotational energy states of the molecule. But there is a condition, the molecules on which it is irradiated with the microwave radiation should have a permanent dipole. So, that will change upon rotation. Okay. The molecule should have a permanent dipole that changes upon the rotation. So, it means the charge difference across the molecule. So, there is a charge difference across the molecule because you have two electric fields, one from the photon, another from the two atoms. So, the charge difference across the molecule for the oscillating electric field of the photon. So, there is an oscillating electric field of the photon, the incoming radiation to impart a torque. Why will be there a torque? Because there is a torque because there is a change in the electric field between the inherent field of the atoms and the incoming photon. Because of that it imparts a torque upon the molecule around an axis that is perpendicular to this dipole and that passes through the molecule's center of mass. Because of this charge difference or the electric field difference, the molecule experiences a torque and because of this torque, there is a change in the energy level and these changes in energy levels are termed as rotational energy transition and they only absorb in the microwave region. So, next what we will see, we will see how we can obtain this expression of energy, but prior to that let us discuss how we compute angular momentum and linear momentum. I will just discuss briefly how you draw analogy between these two linear and angular momentum. So, you have read in your uh, plus 2 or in your other in your undergraduate also. So, you have the linear momentum I can write down as this way. P is equal to P you know it is m into v, this is what we have learned the linear momentum. Now, for example, if I draw a, let us suppose there is an atom which is rotating around the center. So, this is let us say the atom which is rotating or a mass particle m rotating. So, if it rotates, there will be a center like this and a rotational field like this. So, this is the direction of rotation. So, you have the axis also coming down finally going out. So, this is a rotation and this distance is r from the origin O. Okay. So, if this distance is r, so we can define two few things. One is the velocity of rotation, v rotation. This is nothing but we write in terms when it is rotating molecule, we write as frequency of rotation.
usually we write this in terms of cycles per second cycles per second so if the v rotational frequency of rotation so this particular mass is rotating around the origin o so i can write expression which relates it with the linear velocity v so it is nothing but 2 pi r into v rotational okay so this is the velocity linear velocity and the rotational velocity this so i can write down this as r into omega so what is this omega so omega rotational so omega rotational here becomes the angular velocity what is that angular velocity it is 2 pi v rotational this is nothing but the angular velocity angular velocity So this should not look like a frequency, it is actually velocity. Angular velocity is given by 2 pi v of rotational. Okay. So now let us write the velocity, linear velocity. You know the kinetic energy velocity is half m v square. Now if I want to convert to angular velocity, I will write the values in terms of angular velocity. So instead of linear velocity, I just change it to angular velocity. So this takes the form half of m into r square into omega square okay so v here is omega into r so v square is r square omega square v is omega into r from this expression so if there is a mass m which connects to the kinetic velocity or kinetic energy there would be a corresponding term analogous term to the angular velocity so what is that term you relate mass with some of the term which is out here so omega you assume as velocity so in this case i can write down half into i omega square so it means i can write m into r square as i and i is you know is moment of inertia this is how we define moment of inertia so the moment of inertia takes the equation i is equal to m into r square so it means the angular velocity is now replaced with the linear velocity or I would say linear velocity replaced by angular velocity in the same manner the mass of the particle gets replaced by the moment of inertia. So naturally we will talk about the angular momentum and the linear momentum because so the linear momentum in the case of rotating mass takes the form i into omega because it is m into v so it will be in terms of linear velocity m into v so it will be analogously written i into omega. So, this will be nothing but m r square into v by r, okay. Omega here is from this expression I can write omega rotation as v by r. So, substitute v by r. So, you can write down L as equal to m v r. So, this is your angular momentum. Okay. So, this basic definition I am just explaining because you will be able to understand how this energy level derivation is done. Now, let us come back to our problem, a two body problem. So, in the two body problem, we will again draw a similar diagram and we can see we have to obtain moment of inertia of that two body problem. So, let us see how we can draw. I will draw a three dimensional diagram. I try to make it more specific and explicit. See, again I have an origin O where the center of mass or the where the center of mass is located for the two bodies let us suppose i have a body here and i have a body here if i connect these two let us suppose this is the center of mass okay and uh, let us assume the distance between this to this is r1 and distance from this to this is r2 let us suppose this is m2 this is m1 the center of mass passes through this. So, if you take this expression, let us assume this as the origin O of center of mass. So, this mass will rotate from the center of mass of the entire system O with a radius R2. So, let me draw this particular its orbit. Okay. 
this is the orbit for m2 sorry both are m2 this will be m1 this is m1 for m1 likewise there will be another orbit for m1 so if this is the radius for m1 for radius for m2 will be r1 so again i will draw another line something like this so this moves this side and this is moving this side so both are rotating one of them with a radius r2 another one is rotating with a radius r1 so m1 m2 are rotating with radius r1 and r2 respectively so if i want to draw it in a three dimensional space so i'll make the dotted line such that it passes through the entire system so this is in the in front of you now only issue is the rigid rotor model what it says is that this distance the distance between m1 and m2 this one if i want to draw this this always remains constant okay the distance both of them are rotating along its orbit with radius let's say r1 and r2 but the interatomic separation between both the atoms are constant and that is equal to r so what they say is this r is not changing it's only they are rotating along its own orbit but passing the origin is through the center of mass so this line which i have drawn in the center this will be your center of mass of the two mass system center of mass okay so this is how the two masses are lying now again we write out the expressions so if you know the reduced mass you should understand what is the reduced mass this is important for you reduced mass is nothing but m1 into m2 by m1 plus m2 so reduced mass is always it is the overall mass of the system so it is the product of two mass by addition of two mass now when i give you any problem you should not write directly the masses you should convert into atomic units so i told you the atomic units you have to convert in atomic mass unit that is equal to 1.67 to 10 to the power of minus 27 kg so you have to use that factor while you write masses otherwise you will get a erroneous result so let us come back let us write out the expression so there will be some concepts of quantum chemistry i will not discuss in deeper the derivation but i will write out the main expressions so you can find everything all the derivation in this book so we have already written these expressions so i'm just write it down so the kinetic energy is equal to half of i omega square okay so i will be then equal to mu r square so mu is the reduced mass instead of m i am writing mu because it is a two body system so if you know this so the angular momentum takes the form i omega okay so i can write the kinetic energy in terms of momentum as l square by 2l okay so if you write like this what i will do i will have to solve the energy states corresponding to two body system so what they do is they will use a rigid rotor orientation expression so the rigid rotor i will explain what it means that you cannot play with the normal cartesian coordinates so what they do they change the entire expression in terms of wave functions or in terms of expression which are having the spherical coordinates so it is the spherical components is written in terms of a function y this theta and phi in this theta and phi so now what you do is if you remember the quantum chemistry principle you apply a hamiltonian on this particular function so it will be a eigen value problem it will give you the energy values the energy states which we want to multiplied by the wave function so the entire system has been converted to a wave function so that you obtain the eigen value problem you solve this eigen value problem we get the energy values now theta and phi are the coordinates in terms of theta and phi because we cannot write in terms of r because r is fixed so then what we do is we try to solve this now we talk about this hamiltonian hamiltonian is operator operator means it will direct to do some expression some calculation for example if i write 
the kinetic energy operator it is half m so half m into v square we know so that is the kinetic energy operator so it is let's say half m dv by dt will give you acceleration or dm by dt the distance will give you velocity so it is the operator it means something is operated on so it means operating this operator will operate on this function to give you the energy values with the product with the same function so this operator hamiltonian operator is equal to minus h square by 2i into square okay this operator now the operator for obtaining the kinetic energy term through the rigid rotator approximation is this expression delta square so delta square here is equal to 1 by r square into dou upon dou r r square dou upon plus 1 upon r square sin theta dou theta sin theta dou upon dou theta by r into phi plus 1 upon r square sin square theta by dou square upon dou phi square by r theta. Now you see uh, this delta in case of Cartesian coordinates is very simple the kinetic energy operator. So, half m into you know di distance derivative of the distance will give you velocity. Same way this delta square is the similar operator in terms of angular velocity. So, in terms of angular velocity I have written the Hamiltonian operator that is this operator in terms of r theta and phi. Now, the issue is r is always constant because the interatomic distance is constant. So, this operators this first expression will go to 0 because r will never change. So, this expression which is here is always 0. So, what you are having is only this expression. So, r square can be taken out. So, only this expression there will be some values. So, the overall delta square then becomes addition of the second and third term only. So, how do you then solve for it? So, you write out the expression. So, in this case what you do you write the expression minus h square. So, if I want to write down it will be minus h square by 2i into so this is l square so now it is operated on this function okay rigid rotator wave function equals to So, I will not go much detail upon the solving of this eigenvalue problem. This is you know this eigenvalue problem is what was the basis of Schrodinger time dependent equation. So, Schrodinger's equation this is time dependent equation. So, now uh, we have to solve this expression. For solving this expression what they have done is they have assumed a term called beta, beta as equal to 2 i e by h square ok. So, they have taken this term sin theta into dou upon dou theta sin theta dou phi plus beta sin square theta. So, the solution of this problem if you assume beta as 2 i e by h square is this. So, I am not going into the intermediate steps you can go through this book and find out those steps. So, now what they have done is in order to solve this expression this particular partial differential expression they are taken into a total differential. So, what for that they have separated out the variables theta phi they have written as these two terms theta into phi. So, this phi and this phi are different ok. So, they have separated out the variables and then they have solved. So, if you solve for this expression you take this expression of this form sin theta by 
by d of d theta d of d theta of sin theta d by d theta plus beta sin square theta equal to m square. This is the expression they are obtained okay, where m square is equal to minus m square is equal to 1 upon phi of this phi and these two phi are different. So, do not worry I just write here the terms this is will be perpendicular 1 upon phi do okay. So, if you solve for this expression m values you will get so, if you solve for this expression, let us suppose expression 1. So, this solution is only possible when beta is equal to L into L plus 1. This is the solution strategy. I am not going to details how it has been solved, where L can take any values between 0, 1, 2, etc. So, if this is true, then I can write the energy levels as E L as H S square upon 2 i l into l plus 1 okay l goes from 0 1 2 el okay so these are the two these are the important conclusion else uh, delta that total energy can be written in this form so this is how the two expressions is solved this particular expression one is solved and you get beta and el so the solution strategy is given in this book please go through the derivation carefully now we see what are the rules for obtaining the energy transition because in the rotational energy states we need to know the energy transition between the levels L here stands for the level. Let us see that. So a criteria for this level is this delta L the levels the distribution of the levels can only be between plus and minus 1. It cannot go directly from 0th level to 3rd, 2nd level or 4th level or 5th level. It can go only one level either one below or one down. So, it is we can write down this level as plus minus of 1. So, there are two things this for rotational spectroscopy the level should increase by a unitary magnitude and it should have a permanent dipole moment. So, it means you can see only rotational spectroscopy in those cases where the change in the levels are by 1 and having a permanent dipole moment. So, if that is true, let us now write down what is delta E. So, delta E is nothing but if you put the values, it will be H square I upon L plus 1 or H square by 4 pi square I into L plus 1. Now, we know that the Bohr's frequency I can write delta E as H nu. So, it means I will write from this expression H into H by 4 pi square I into L plus 1. I can ex write this expression delta E in this manner. So, it implies that the frequency I can write down as H upon 4 pi square I upon L plus 1. So, these are the rotational frequencies. Now, to make our point or to make our assumption, let us see if I want to calculate what are the values of these frequencies. For a diatomic molecule, now I am putting a case for a diatomic molecule. So, for a diatomic molecule, mu usually varies from 10 to the power of minus 25 to 10 to the power of minus 26 kg. Okay? The reduced mass between two atoms varies from this value. And the interatomic separation R is close to 10 to the power of minus 10 in 1 Armstrong that is 10 to the power of minus 10 meters 
and the moment of inertia if you put those values will be roughly varying from 10 to the power of minus 45 to 10 to the power of minus 46 kg per meter square okay these are the roughly the values on which all the diatomic molecules will lie so if you substitute all these values in this frequency expression which is nothing but h pi 2 pi square i upon l plus 1 you will get frequencies ranging between 2 into 10 to the power of 10 to 10 to the power of 11 hertz. So, this particular frequency ranges which you get by solving this expression and these values lies in the microwave spectrum. That is why this rotational states you always correspond to the microwave spectrum. Why? Because the frequencies lie between these two these values. Okay. So, now mm, you can write the frequency in terms of a constant called a rotational constant. You can write the frequency as 2b into L plus 1. So, I can write down b as h upon 8 pi square i. Okay. This will be 4. This will be 4. So, if you write b like this, so I can write frequency in terms of a rotational constant b because h and i is a constant for a molecule. It won't change. It's only the frequency which is changing. Let us take out b outside, so that only the levels will be appearing explicitly on the frequency l. So now I can write down this b. So it will have a unit of in hertz. This is called the rotational constant. Rotational constant. And if you want to write in terms of wave numbers, you have to uh, use this expression, multiply with the uh, you know speed of light. So you will get the v bar as nothing but 2 into b bar into l plus 1. So you get the frequencies in terms of rotational constant. These are in wave numbers while these are in hertz. So you compare hertz convert hertz to wave number by multiplying by speed of light. So now let us see how we can write out this rotational constants and the energy levels so that we can get finally the energy levels of the diatomic molecules. So in this what I will do we write two things one is the in the x axis this be the rotational energy levels rotational energy levels and the y axis what I will do this is the shifted frequencies okay the frequencies. So now here let us suppose this is the ground state 0 okay 0 let us suppose this is 1 first energy level let us suppose this is 2 and let us suppose this is the third energy level. Now for a transition to occurs, it says it can only go from a single state to the next state. So if it goes in this manner, so this difference is equal to 2br, 2b this one. Okay. So the frequency here will be present as 2b. Now suppose it goes from transition occurs from 1 to 2, it will go like this. Again it will be 4b now not 2b because the expression is uh, this frequency expression if you remember it is 2b bar by l plus 1. So l goes from let us say when it is 1 and when it is 2. So 1 is 4b bar and when it is 2 it is 6b bar. So if you see the difference here will be 4b bar. In this case if it goes from 2 to 3, again it will become 6b bar now, 6b bar. So your frequency will also be changing. So this will become 4b bar. If you observe a transition from 2 to 3, this will become 6b bar. So these transitions will occur in this manner. Okay. So if you see this delta E then takes the form h square by 4 pi square i by L plus 1 or you can write S over to 2b 
of L plus 1. Okay. So, if you substitute here 1, it will be, if you substitute here 0, for example, if you substitute here 0, so it means it is taking care from 0 to 1. So, 0 if you have substitute, it will be 2B bar, this is the region. If you substitute here L as 2, it will be 1 plus 1, 2, 2 into 2, 4, 4B four bar. So, it is going from 1 to 2. If you put substitute here as 3, it will be, uh, or it will be 2, it will be 2 plus 1, 3, 3 to 6B bar. So, 6B bar. So, this is the way the frequencies are defined and this range of frequencies are usually defined in terms of rotational spectroscopy. So, if you know this B bar, you can also compute the corresponding frequency or if you know the frequency, you can also calculate the corresponding moment of inertia either way. Okay. So, this is how the rotational energy or the rotational spectra or the different energy levels are written here 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay. So, now we continue with our uh, discussion. So, we define a rotational temperature. So, now we come back to that our original expression for rotational partition function. So, E rotational of J, we have found out it is between, I am writing here J and it is L, the same thing, no change by H pi square into I. So, the expression for rotational is this, then this takes up the form. So, it is e to the power of minus exponential term and summation. So, I am writing the same expression. Okay. So, this takes the form j, it can either be all j, it can either be only even j or it can be odd j okay, to infinity. Then you write the degeneracy, it is 2j plus 1, this is omega j into e to the power of minus j into j plus 1 h square. 8 pi square by minus e by kt. So, this kt. So, now again the summation term. Now, this summation term I can simplify if I write a rotational temperature term that is h square by 8. So, this is rotational temperature, this has units of Kelvin. rotational temperature, it has units of Kelvin. So, this will be given in terms of Kelvin. So, this is a constant for a particular molecule because once you know the moment of inertia, you can find out the temperature. So, I can write down key rotational as equal to in terms of rotational temperature, J goes from 0, 1 to, to infinity and it will be 2J plus 1 e to the power of minus J into J plus 1 the rotational temperature by temperature. Okay. So, this is the expression. Now, how to compute this expression? We will see. So, this takes the form partition function is Q rotational. Again, I am assuming to compute the summation, I take an integral. It is 2j plus 1 e to the power of minus j by j plus 1 theta r by t. Now, I have written like this, but I can only write like this when there are certain condition. I will come to that condition. So, this takes the form T by theta r minus x into T x. Now, we will worry about this expression later. So, here x I have taken a dimensionless number. It is j plus j plus 1 into Okay, this x is equal to this. So, this can only take place, this particular replacement of summation with integral with be only possible when t is greater than 5 times of the rotational temperature of that particular diatomic molecule. If not, then I am sorry, you cannot use this expression. So, for that, it means if I want to write out the expressions, find out what are the values. See, for hydrogen, the rotational temperature is close to 87.5 Kelvin. HCl, it is around 15.2 Kelvin. Nitrogen, N2 is equal to 2.89 Kelvin. And oxygen, 
is equal to 2.08 Kelvin. So, bearing hydrogen, most of the molecules will satisfy this temperature condition at room temperature. It will be obviously 5 times of this rotational temperature, but hydrogen it is not possible. So, the phase of hydrogen we will have to make some assumption. So, these values theta r are always obtained from the previous slide what I have shown you that is the microwave spectrum. So, just I will just write down the expression this is equal to T upon theta r we have found out from the previous expression, but for hydrogen only for hydrogen remember not for all this T should be greater than 5 theta r is not true because it is 87.5. So, it will never be true because uh, this temperature will be always be higher 5 times of 87.5 will always be higher let us say at a room temperature. So, for hydrogen we you do a series expansion. So, what is that series expansion? You write at room temperature if you see at room temperature this will be T upon theta r is 3.4. Okay, so, it is not following this expression. So, for hydrogen you write Q rotational a Taylor series expansion theta r 1 plus theta r 3 t plus 1 upon 15 theta r by t whole square plus an order of remaining terms of the cube. Okay. So, this is for hydrogen. Now, we come for the homonuclear species such as O2, N2, other things which actually follow this rule. So, if this is the case for that, so we have to see the summation of this term 2j plus 1 into e to the power of minus j plus j plus 1 theta r by t. But only cases here only odd or even odd or even values of j are allowed. Okay. So, what do we do? So, at high temperature you can safely assume this evaluation when j is equal to odd you can write out this expression 2 j plus 1 then e to the power of minus j upon j plus 1 into theta r by t is roughly equal to j of even 2j plus 1 so minus j upon j plus 1 theta r by t which is equal to nothing but half of summation of all j into 2j plus 1 e to the power of minus j into j plus 1 rotational temperature theta r by t. So, what it says is if you take either odd terms or even terms this is exactly the half of all the terms of J that is what they said. So, it means Q rotational even is equal to Q rotational odd terms is equal to half of Q rotational all terms okay, which is nothing but half of that value T by rotational temperature which is half of T into theta r okay, or T upon 2 theta r because we got this expression from the previous term. So, we come with a symmetry number. What is the symmetry number? So, for any molecule I can write the rotational partition function as simply T upon sigma so, if you know the rotational temperature and the system of interest temperature, you need to define a symmetry number. The value of this symmetry number represents the total count of distinct orientation of a molecule that are indistinguishable from the initial orientation achieving through all possible rotations of the molecule. For example, if I take HCl, how many ways you can write H and Cl? So, if you suppose, can you replace H with Cl and H with Cl? There is only one way of writing HCl that is this HCl, this bond. But for H2 or N2, I can write like this or N2, I can write like this. Now, if I replace the first atom with second atom, the second atom with first atom, the molecules remain the same. So, there are two distinct ways of writing the molecular structure. So, that is why the sigma term takes the value of 2 here. 
same way here if I replace right, first atom with the second atom, the second atom with the first atom, again there are two ways. But in this case only one way you can write HCl, you, if you change the atoms then the valency will not be uh, true. So it will have a sigma as 1, okay. So that is how this symmetry number is achieved. So this is we come to the end because we have now obtained the rotational partition function for both homonuclear as well as heteronuclear. So we have to follow this expression in general and we have to find out the symmetry number. So if you find the symmetry number, you can obtain the rotational partition function. So I will stop here. Please go to the Sandler's book to obtain more derivation and the details regarding the rotational partition function and follow this book of Ronald McGuire which discussed the rigid rotor problem. So if you follow it, you will find the expression for the energy levels more in details. Thank you. Mm -hmm.